What's up? Welcome to the Segmented Podcast, the show where we bring you three segments each episode, ranging from discussion to improv. How are you doing, Noah? I am doing well, Benjamin 2.0, Benjamin 2000, Ben 2000. Just kidding, we're not robots. <laughs> we we totally, totally fooled everyone. I, know. I am a human for sure. Speaking of robots, though, mm-hmm. big big problems over at my relatives. I was at my relatives um, for a little bit of a, a family gathering and my aunt, um, my aunt actually passed oh. recently. It was a sad time, but uh, luckily we had her consciousness uploaded to uh, Google Drive. So, oh, that's cool. Yeah, so we were able to just put her into, um, you know, like a Fitbit. And so now my uncle just wears a Fitbit around uh, with her consciousness Aww. in that. Which I at first, you know, we thought was sweet, but I mean, human consciousnesses are not very happy when they're confined to uh, somebody's Fitbit. So yeah. uh, she mostly just complains a lot. So we we got it. We we lasted until about three o'clock till we had to shut her off. So that was. I mean, it wasn't really sad. Everyone was pretty happy. We played a game of Monop- Monopoly, and uh, it, it was good after that. But yeah, kind of a kind of a crummy weekend uh, with my family. Yeah, that's rough. Losing a relative, getting them back, finding out that you don't want them back. Oof. Yeah. Yeah, it's a common thing, and I'm sorry it happened to you. But um, in other news, you know my whole thing with uh, my cow. Oh yeah, that that little predicament thingy. Yeah. yeah, trying to take over the entire universe. Well, it's not really happening anymore because the cow spontaneously blew up it exploded and i don't know how or why but i went into the barn one day and there he was just exploded all over the place and it was disgusting wow. but um now the pig has a third eye and is levitating so i don't know if this is a case of like pig has taken over the cow or like what but um i think the the pig might be the new ruler Maybe, maybe it's a power that chooses uh, its own host. Um, perhaps mm. the cow wasn't doing a good enough job in taking over the universe, so perhaps now your pig's going to get a turn. Perhaps, perhaps. But on the bright side, maybe I can reason with the pig to make it so you make it through here, you know? Mm, yeah, yeah. I mean, that'd, that'd be nice. I don't I don't have the, the highest hopes. And if not, you know, no big deal. Yeah, uh, no big yeah, deal. I mean, it's worth a shot. Worth a shot. Yep. It's worth a... That was a good one. Yeah, now I got it. <laughs> I was just trying to make another pig pun, but I couldn't figure yeah. anything out. Anyway, what uh, what segments are we doing today, Ben? Oh, uh, wonderful question. Uh, we're is. doing three segments. Uh, what? The first one is starts with a one. The second one starts with a two. And the third one's... Oh, you meant the... Okay, what type? Okay, got it. Oh, so, yes. Um, I mean, yeah, the specific segments. Right. That's usually how we go. Yeah. Okay. Um, the first segment is a two-minute improv story. So the okay. first segment actually starts with a two. You know, I, I didn't really think about it that way, but um, <laughs> yeah. So the first segment is two-minute improv story. Okay, uh, got the it. The second segment is infomercial products. There's no I number can't. in front of that. And the third segment, we're going to do another episode of Soap. So that's exciting. We'll, we'll see how the, the riveting story progresses of our wonderful, relatable characters of so Soap. So relatable. Soap. It's super fantastic. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. Uh, with that, let's go through a wardrobe and enter segmented segments. Segment one, two-minute improv story. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to have a timer that goes for two minutes and within that time we have to tell a story as we're telling the story every 15 seconds our co-host will give us a new word we then have to incorporate that word into the story and continue to tell it all these words are from a random word generator and i will leave that in the show notes if you'd like to play along or try this and it is incredibly fun uh without further ado would you like to give me my first word so we can get started uh i would all right all right your first word is extreme extreme i was once an extreme skateboarder going down all the slopes the skate slopes of aphrodite that doesn't make sense but that's okay and so one day there was this one guy named alfonso and he advantage comes over to me and i and he was like yo uh 
hey, I'm Alfonso, what are you doing on my slopes? And I said, well, I have the advantage here because I grew up on these extreme slopes. And he says, uh, yo, uh, these are my slopes. Get out of here. And I said, you know what? Night. Uh, no. I said, I've been here all day, all night, and I will keep skating boarding on these slopes as long as I live. And he says, hey, um, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, and then he called over his buddy. And he was like, yo, Tony, get over here. And so uh, now I'm fighting this anonymous. guy. Anonymous. I'm fighting this anonymous guy named Tony um, that I have no idea anything about him. And so I'm trying to, like, fight with this guy, like, not physically, but, like, in an argument, uh, trying to debate to get my slopes back. Expose. And uh, trying to expose them to everyone else saying, hey, guys, look at these noobs over here trying to steal my slope. And uh, so I yell that and everyone comes to me. And now at this point, there's all I'm being smile. I'm surrounded by this big crowd of smiling people. And they're just like, wow, you go. And they kept cheering my name. They go, no, no, no. And I said, Alfonso, Tony, you're going to have to get pick up your skateboards and jump, jump down the hill Hill. and. Say that again? Pill? Jump down the pill or, I mean, jump down the hill or I'll give you a pill to die. And so they said, hey, um, this is our slope, but you know what? Fine, we'll just let you have it. It's a stupid slope anyway. And so, uh... Cannon. I, and so, um, what they did was they jumped into a cannon and they just shot themselves off, off the mountain. To be fair, it looked heckin' rad. So, that's fine. So they ended and it was a completely radical ending for their beep, time beep, to be back beep, 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 beep. wow so they were skateboarding down a slope yep okay exactly that's I was how just that making works sure right I, yeah no that is how it works mm-hmm. sorry totally a extreme. lot of people get it wrong so i was yeah just, it's extreme skateboarding i had my fact checker on the side here uh, i do mm-hmm. that now um on the podcast uh oh, you fact check. after yeah after all the you know mean comments uh, mm. We've gotten about being uh, being incorrect, uh, not with just our logical fallacies, but with just totally incorrect facts. Uh, I have an official Alex Jones fact checker here um, that I use, oh. so it's it's right. it's good yeah. for for stuff like this. All right, I have eight completely random words here. Are you ready? Completely random? Can you the double check? The most random. Okay. 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 Three, two, one, grave. So I was digging my own grave the other day, not because I was expecting to die, but you know, I just like to, you know, be prepared. Um, so I was digging it out. I picked the spot and everything is nice, soft clay. Um, and it was, it was perfectly rectangular. Conservative. And, and then, uh, some, some guy walked up to me. He's like, eh, isn't that a bit conservative? And then I was like, what are you calling me fat? And he's like, well, you don't know. When you get older, you might get, you know, a lot bigger. You might need a bigger hole. So I'm like, all right. Candy. So dug it twice as big. And he's like, mm, I don't know. What if you want to be buried with all your candy? And I was like, ah, you're right. I do have a massive candy stash. And if I don't eat that in time, like if I didn't get in a car crush tomorrow, I want to be buried with that. Because just like the ancient Egyptians, I want to eat that any. in the afterlife. And so he's like, well, aren't you going to leave any room for me? And I'm like, who are you? And then, of course, he pulls off his uh, Scooby-Doo mask. And, hey, it's my long lost sister. Um, Cannibal. And I'm like, hey, long lost sister. Um, I thought we excommunicated you because you were like a cannibal and stuff. And she's like, nah, that was all just a big hoax. I came back here to give you uh, this gift here. And uh, she gave it to me. And it was a really big uh, Ring. shovel. And I was like, oh, thanks. I have this gift for you, too. Uh, And then I gave her uh, this ring that I had. Uh, She put it on, and then it revealed her true form, a dark wraith. I then used the brand new shovel that I'd given her to fight off her evil power. Disaster. But she knew that that was going to happen, so that's why she gave me the shovel. I swung at it, and it was an absolute disaster. It transformed into a snake, and it bit my hand, and I screamed, and then I fell into my grave. Luckily, I had just thrown the candy in because I thought that I might be dying soon. And then she pulled out a bottle, and I was like, no, not that. And she threw it down there, and it spilled all over my face. And I was like, no, my least favorite. Only you would know. Tabasco. Beep, so, beep, beep. Wow, that was really well-timed. Well I, done. I thought that was the last word, but I wasn't sure. Well done, well done. <laughs> Only you would know, Tabasco. I thought we excommunicated you because you're a cannibal and stuff. I was gonna she do. Was... I was gonna do. It's gonna be like a. It's gonna be like a fable where the dude ended up just digging a bigger and bigger hole, but uh, the words did not allow it. So um, 
he had to get into a fight with his excommunicated cannibal Dark Wraith sister. Yeah, as you do. Segment two, infomercial products. Today, we're going to create an infomercial product. Actually, no, we're going to create multiple infomercial products, and we're going to sell them to you off the cuff with random words. It's going to be great. Order now is how it ends every time. Always. I don't know why. It doesn't have to, but it's uh, for some reason it's just a funny punchline for me. So, uh, no, no, no. It's see, it's perfect because you can build up this tone, and then at the end you can just be like, "Order now." Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Great punchline. Always good. All the time. Twenty four seven. It's good for the free. whole family. You know, you sit down for Saturday morning cartoons, and you know the only thing, the worst thing your kid is gonna see, is. A 30-minute infomercial product for a thing of knives. Yeah. And uh, he'll just be really bored. So, you know, yeah. you can you can trust the media and television. Mm-hmm. Fortunately for you, we have a 30-second infomercial for something that I don't know yet. But do you want to give the do the first pitch or? Yeah, I can I can do the first pitch. Uh, so we have All right. 30 seconds. So, yeah, that's not a set oh, time. Okay, it's just okay, okay. a loose definition. All right. Um. I have three words for you. Okay, okay. You have three words for me? Okay. Mm-hmm. Debug haunting atonement. Are you tired of finding debug hunters in your house? Of course you are. That's why today we are going to make them all good people with the debug hunting atoner. All you gotta do is find those pesky uh, debug hunters in your house that are surely sitting on their small MacBook laptops trying to debug their software app. And all you gotta do is you just gotta uh, sprinkle a little bit of the atonement solution on them, and voila, all of their sins are gone. <laughs> Here is the creator of the debug hunter atonement so- solution, Grack Bean. I'm Grack Bean, and uh, I used to be so upset with all these debug hunters, always trying to decode their things with their MacBooks. Stupid. And so uh, I was thinking, man, they sure are sinful for using Macs. And I thought, you know what? I can do a service to them, even though I hate them with a burning passion. So I decided what better way to do this than with uh, my debug hunter atoning solution. So that's why I did it. And buy it. You can buy it if you want. So uh, pre-order now. Call 1-800-ATONEMENT. I, that was that was some hard words. <laughs> I'm sorry. I should have chosen three new ones because they weren't even proper. <laughs> None of them were were nouns, um, except for atonement. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm waiting until I know what all of the words are. Yeah, you should. Yeah. So you'll give me some, and then give me three nouns. I think that's what we'll do, or maybe like one adjective. You can rearrange the words so it actually seems like an actual product. I think that's what we'll do. Um. Um. Here. Uh. How how do you feel about a loyal wife cell? <laughs> Actual three words I just got. Gosh dang it. Are you tired of your non-loyal wife? Well, you need the loyal wife cell. If your wife is being unloyal or unfaithful, what you just got to do is buy the cell and uh, throw her in there. She'll be still loyal to you all the time. Listen to this interview from this satisfied customer. You know, my wife all the time, she was trying to do things like uh, go outside and uh, make a garden and, uh, you know, things that uh, women try to do. But luckily, uh, with this new product, I'm able to keep her in the one place she belongs. The office, uh, doing all of the important work to make the make the money in the house. It's very, very responsible of her. I'm, I'm, in, I'm glad, I'm, gl- I'm glad I have this product. Thank you. And now here's an interview from his wife. Um, yeah, I, I, I kind of just, I kind of just stay in the office all day and work. Uh, the other day he started, he started putting some bars around the doors. I'm not, I'm not really sure why. I, I, I think he's trying to make a joke about how I'm always working and I, I never, uh, I never do anything else. Like, plant a garden. He keeps talking about planting a garden. I, I, I don't really get it. Uh, we don't have a lot of money, so this is the only thing that I know how to do. What satisfied customers? Well, if you want to be as satisfied with your marriage as these two folks are, just call 1-800-GIVE-ME-A-BETTER-WIFE. 
Warning, we will not be held liable for uh, any divorces that may be caused by this uh, product. Uh, we know that this happens. Actually, there's an 85% uh, rate that uh, you will be divorced if you use this product. Please don't use this product. But if you do, we will not pay for any of the divorce. Order now. <laughs> that is going to be so offensive. <laughs> that, one, so that one was bad. <laughs> but it's so good. I tried to, I tried to pull some uh, Last Jedi expectation subversions but uh i don't think it really helped the cause <laughs> okay i have this one <clears throat> slippery amusement propaganda hi there guys so recently i was just trying to go to an amusement park when i found this amazing new product it's called slippery amusement propaganda now whenever you want to be entertained or be amused in any way you can use this product to make sure that your friends don't have it so you have all of the fun just listen to the to this satisfied customer who's using it right now going to the park with his friends i used to be really lame because i didn't know how to do propaganda but once i bought this product it was all slippery slope from there and uh now i am ruling over my entire community with my propaganda but they're amused by it so i don't i mean if you want power it's a really easy way to to, to get it but it uh doesn't doesn't feel too good Today, we're on the street with some of our best slippery amusement propaganda flyers that we give out, and we're giving them to people for free. Here are some live testimonials from people that we're giving these to on the street. We need people to be slippery and Both being amused. So slippery equality. Please. Don't do bad I things. Be person. more slippery. Are you What's wrong we with are. There you yeah, Be are. more slippery. Thanks, uh, a lot of people have been asking us, how do you manipulate people to be unhappy while still being totally ruled over by you? It's a slippery, slippery slope. Uh, but here we have an expert in the field, Slippers Slipperton. Slippers, tell us how it works. Oh, uh, yes, of course. Um, so basically, we tell the people what they think they like, and then what they realize later on when it's too late is that it actually means that we now control them. It's all about controlling the information that goes out. And that is the how that works. Order now. <laughs> uh, okay. Do you want to give me one more? Um, anonymous combustible bean. Hey, have you ever tried to blow up your friend's beans? But it always doesn't go right because they already know who, was, who did it. Well, well, I have a product for you. The anonymous ex combustible bean. So basically what you do is you take this bean and you slip it very carefully into anybody's chili or other bean based product and do you know what happens? It blows up and the best part is it makes the person who's eating the beans forget anything happens so it's completely anonymous. So if, if you want to prank someone it's the perfect product. Listen to these certified prankers. <laughs> yeah, one time um, I was at my friend's house and I put a bean in his uh, dad's uh, chili and then it blew up and uh, there was an ambulance and stuff and I was with my friend and we were laughing pretty hard it was a great time I recommend see that's perfect now you may be wondering who the heck would make something like this well this is the inventor Schlerba Labim Bob Schlerba tell us what you did Yes, so uh, what, essentially what I've created here is a, is a very, very small uh, uh, combustible microchip. And so what we do is we insert it into a perfectly Nerd! lifelike Basically site. Basically what happens is this guy's a pranker and he loves things. So if you want to be a prank, it's a great prank. Order now. This was supposed to be a military weapon. I, I'm not really sure what's going on. You know on what? Right it now. doesn't matter. It's a prank now. <laughs> Order now. <laughs> <laughs> segment three soap this is our segment where we do a soap opera that's about it it continues from episode to episode um so if you've seen our last uh segment of soap uh we're going to be following right off from there uh using the same characters um and we're going to try our best to uh continue the story while keeping all of the wonderful uh soap tropes everything in this is completely improvised and we have to use two randomly generated words from our wonderful random word generator. So that has to be mixed somewhere into our dialogue or the story. 
without further ado, Soap. Washing our eyes with soap. Washing our ears with soap. Doing everything with soap. Previously on Soap, Robert and his wife, Loran, had recently discovered that their son, Franklin, has been hanging around with this guy named Trent. We don't like Trent very much, he's a bad influence. Trent wanted, uh, no, no, Franklin wanted money, and Robert and Loran was something, whatever, and then Uncle Joey came back to life. There's that uncle, and he has a biplane, and he went and he picked up Franklin and Trent and took them with him. The episode ended with... Robert finding out that Franklin isn't actually Robert's son. Oh, it was Uncle Joey all this time, wasn't it? Yes, it was your brother, Joey. How did you know that he was still alive? It was. This was 14 years ago, because Franklin is 14 years old. You knew this. I, I right. didn't... I that, that's I true. He, he, he did die approximately 15 years. Yeah, he died. Yeah, it is quite coincidental that he died right after that. Wait, Loran! Outside yes. the window. <gasps> Wait, there he is. In the biplane. I, I see think him. I can almost see Franklin. Let me grab my binoculars. Oh, oh, there's, there's Joey with his beautiful beard that he's always had. I've always Shut liked up, that beard. Why couldn't you ever grow a beard, beard, Robert? Because I can't. It's in my genetics, Loran. Fine, but whatever. I'm grabbing my sniper rifle. No, what? No, that is our son. I'm looking through the binoculars now. That's our son. Robert, you can't. You mustn't. Cut to the airplane. I, I just saw Dad. He, he was going out to the shed. I, I, I heard I heard he was going to get the sniper rifle. Hey, guys, uh, quiet, quiet down there, son, sonny boy. Uh, I'm your uncle, all right? So, uh, here, let me just fly this plane. Actually, you know what? Uh, I'm going to get this parachute on right now. And uh, you can just uh, fly this plane. You don't know how to fly, right? Uh, I, I, I think so. What are you going to do? Uh, we'll find out. Uh, see you later. Foo. Uh, uh, Trent, do you have any idea how to fly a plane? I mean, I don't know, man. Uh, I did come, grow up in Boston, but it seems though we're going down, which is the wrong direction. So, uh, how about I just, uh, yeah, you grab that side, I grab this one, we go up. Uh, I think, I think we're going to crash directly into the National Gravel Hospital. Whoa, what a rush. Franklin, you're not moving. Oh, I don't feel so good. Franklin! Franklin! Cut back to Loran and Robert. Wait! All right. They just crashed the plane! Robert! Wait, where'd the plane go? Did... Joey jumped out of the plane! He just Joey. left him to die! I'm gonna hunt down Joey in the forest! What? Joey! Cut to the forest. I know you're out here somewhere. I, I know you know that you're actually the father of my son, Franklin, who may or may not be dead in the National Gravel Hospital a few blocks away. Uh, yo, uh, Robert, my buddy, my my brother, what are you doing? Don't say another word. Uh, Joey, okay. I my always hands are knew, raised. I, I always knew you were, you were jealous of me, but I didn't know you were that jealous, and now I'm going to kill you. Wait, but look, look behind you, it's your, it's your wife. No! Robert, don't do it. Loran? I... I love him. I'm sorry. I have to. <laughs> no! Oh, no, I missed. Yeah, you it missed him. You've never been a good aim, tree. brother. No, what? Loran. Doc, quickly. Uh, okay. Oh, man. That was I mean, that was a close one. That was really weird. The bullet, like, ricocheted off the... Tr Actually, I'm out of bullets. Um, so... Hey, well, what kind of, what is this, a gimmick? Uh, what kind of gimmick is this? What are you trying to pull here? Well, okay, so I was, I expected to have a lot more than that. But Joey, why would yeah. you do this? Well, Bob, Robbie, Robbie, boy, uh, you know, the, the heart knows no bounds and all that does. Yes, I, I do know. Father always spoke about that. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, it's okay, Robert. <laughs> Here, there, there, I'm patting you on the back now. Pat, pat, pat. It's all right, it's all right. I think that we we should try to find our son now. Hey, what? did you see what happened to him, Robert? 
What happened? Uh, but looks like they crashed into the gravel hospital over there. Into the gravel hospital? <gasps> that's, that's, gravel. that's where our mother is right now. You don't think they uh, saw her? I sure hope not. I'll be bad. But, uh, let's go, Robert. Yes, come on, Robert. Let's, let's make our way over there. Uh, cut to the hospital. Uh. Man, Trent, uh, yeah, I think I think my my legs just totally stuck under this girder. Uh, you're, you're gonna it's have okay. to you're gonna have to just go on without me. I think I'm gonna. Oh, oh all right, okay, fine. Here. Bye. See you later. I don't. I mean, yeah, at a hospital already. I can just yell for someone. Yo, someone, uh, come help my friend here. I'm uh, uh, I'm about. Hello. Is See that, you later. Bye. Is there, is there somebody there? I asked for my orange juice, but I just there's there's a lot of orange, but it's very bright. Oh, I don't no. I don't remember my um, my orange. Mr. Juice. Jefferson, it's okay, it's okay. Um, I, here I, is your orange juice, Mr. Jefferson. Oh, oh thank you. Blimey, you you didn't tell me that there was a a, a bloody uh, plane through the window. Is that what happened? I'm yeah. I'm sorry. Here, let me let me let me drink my orange juice oh. first. <laughs> there's young boy right here. My boy. Oh. I have a boy. I thought I had no, not, two daughters. No, not you, Mr. Jefferson. Just quiet down. Oh, um, okay. boy, are you all right? Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think I'm, uh, oh, I think wow. I'm gonna die soon. Your My leg, leg, it's bleeding. Yeah, it's um, ble it's bleeding pretty bad. Here, let me, um, put this cast on it real quick. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Ah. Um, uh, here. Uh, um, I'll call for an assistant right here. Um, Dr. Misterson, come here, please. Hello. What seems Mi to be the problem here? Dr. Misterson, um, this boy seems to have crashed his plane through our, our hospital, mm. and um, his leg mm, is see. injured. Yes, this is quite a predicament. Um, here, boy, uh, come with me. I shall take you to the uh, emergency. Uh, Dr. Misterson, he can't walk. He needs to be carried. Oh, um, well, what about her? Can't, can't she uh, carry carry uh, him for me? I, I, I... She's dead. She just passed away. Oh. Oh, goodness. How about you take care of that? I'll carry the boy then. Oh, oh, oh thank you very much, Dr. Misterson. Um, cut back to Loren and Robert. Huh, we just made it to the hospital. Oh, man. I wonder if he's, if he, if he's here. I, uh, I hope he's not hurt. Or, or worse, I hope he's not dead. Do you think that, that horrible Trent is with him? Oh, certainly. He's a terrible influence, but at least he's, he sticks around with him whenever he's in a, in a pitch. So... But, yeah, I don't know. He seems like a pretty, pretty okay kid to me. But, uh, Joey, you're, you're a terrible human being. Trent's a bad influence. Yeah, Joey, I, I, I'm, I still haven't forgiven you. I, I probably will still kill you after I find out whether or not my, my son, oh, or not oh, my son, okay. but I'm finding out now my nephew is dead. We can, so. we should consult the committee if you ask me. What committee? But, uh, you know, the one who decides who dies and all that jazz. Oh, um, yeah... We probably should do that first. Yeah, of course. But uh, you go take care of your son. I'm gonna go uh, go other ways, other places. Uh, I'll see you around. All right, Robbie. Okay. Uh, goodbye, brother, man. Loren. I mean, I'm Loren. Yes, yes, well, Loren. No, not you, Robert. Joey, I love you. See you later. Hey, see you around, puts. <sighs> Loren, yes? I want a divorce. <gasps> and scene. <laughs> <laughs> What'll happen next? Are they gonna get divorced? Who knows? Tune in next time on the next episode of Soap. So I think that went really well. And um, were your two words gravel and hospital? Uh, no, my two words were uh, national and uh, and gravel. And so. Uh, I uncreatively use them simultaneously and then basically throw away one of them when I okay. I could have used gravel a lot a lot more creatively. Um my words were gimmick and committee, which is why I had to shoehorn the committee in there. <laughs> the committee and, was, was like <laughs> what? As soon as as soon as I I was I was hoping I would just be able to say we should consult the committee and then you would I was hoping you would ask like what committee? And so um I'm glad you did. That is the end of the show. We hope you did enjoy it. What did we learn today, Ben? We learned that even if you grew up on it, don't don't skateboard down any random hills. Because, you know, you might just run into uh, some, some other skateboarding gangs and they'll try to kick you off their turf. We also learned that if you are trying to dig your own grave, make sure that your long-lost cannibalistic 
Wraith sister is just way far away. Well, we also found out uh, that if you got a bunch of, uh, you know, debugging programmers in your house that are hunting for all those uh, glitches, um, you can use a new solution that'll uh, get rid of all their sins. It won't get rid of them, but it'll get rid of their sins. And finally, we learned that if your wife is being not great, just uh, stick her in a, in a cell. Maybe we didn't learn that. Maybe we yeah, learned maybe, that we shouldn't we, do that. Yeah, maybe we yeah. learned from other people doing that. Yes. Not to, yeah. Yeah. We learned we learned that that is a very bad idea. I mean, it's a good idea if you want a terrible marriage and be a terrible human being and want to go to jail because that's no, it's actual effective for that. Yeah. yeah, that is definitely domestic abuse of some sort. Um, so if you want to go to jail, that's one way to do it. You can find Noah on Twitter at no much underscore and Ben at Tiztendo. Email the podcast at segmented.fm at gmail.com and support the podcast at Patreon at patreon.com slash segmentedfm where you can get extra goodies, talk to the hosts, mainly Noah, on live chat, and very, very occasionally, rarely now, hardly ever happens, listen to the recording sessions live. But the best way that you can support the podcast is to leave a review on iTunes and share it with your friends because leaving a review on iTunes actually does boost search results and makes it so more people can find us. So that would be very awesome. Thank you very much. And uh, with that, if you want to see what is the best way to have a good pickle, eat lots of cucumbers. Phase three is 99% complete. <laughs>